In this presentation, we're going to be looking at Viewport 2.0. Viewport 2 provides large scene performance optimization and higher quality lighting and shaders. It allows for high interactivity. You can work with complex scenes that have many objects, as well as large objects that have heavy geometry. Viewport 2 supports a wide variety of Maya render nodes, including CGFX shaders, substance textures, and PTEX coming from Mudbox. In this example, you can see our character is a relatively low-res game asset coming from Eidos Montreal and all of his details provided in normal maps that Viewport 2 does a beautiful job of rendering. If we play back our animation, you can see that we have very high quality filtered depth map shadows. Viewport 2 also supports cubic and spherical reflection maps, and we can see an example of that on our hovercraft. Let's go ahead and bring up the attribute editor and look at a few of the other advantages that Viewport 2.0 gives us. The first thing we want to talk about is performance. When working with Viewport 2.0, we have the ability to vertex cache our animation. Once you do this, your skinned characters will play back substantially faster. We also have the ability to thread dependency graph evaluate. What this means is if you have multiple characters in your scene, you can turn this on and have each character evaluated on an individual thread. Let's look at a few of the examples of filters that we can apply to make our scene look a little bit better in Viewport 2. You'll notice that I already have one of them turned on, which is Gamma Correct. If we turn that guy off, you can see that my scene's really a bit dark and it really needs some help from that Gamma. As soon as I turn that on, I get that pop back. Notice that we have a lot of aliasing that's happening around the edges of all of our geometry. We can address this very quickly by just simply turning on multi-sample anti-aliasing. And as soon as I do that, you can see my screen looks considerably better. I'm going to go and frame this shot over a little bit further to the right and play it back one more time. You'll see we have that ship basically blasting off screen. And what I want to do is turn on motion blur so that as it flies past the camera, it looks streaked and blurred as, as you would expect. So we'll just simply turn on motion blur. I'm going to crank the sample count up high on that. And we'll play back the animation one more time. And you can see that we get that cool motion blur. Notice that as I move my camera around, the objects in the foreground blur more than the objects in the background, as you would expect. So again, here comes the spaceship, kind of blasting by the camera. And we're going to see that really cool motion blur one last time. So the next effect that we want to look at is something that actually happens on the camera, and it's depth of field. So let's just kind of frame this shot up somewhere a little tighter, something like that. We'll go ahead and we'll select our camera. With our camera selected, we'll just turn on depth of field, and you can see that everything gets blurred out because my focal distance isn't set properly. So we'll just start to push that focal distance back, and you can see it's sort of wiping past the ship. Now it's up to the, where the character is. And that depth of field is still relatively shallow, so we're going to go ahead and just increase the f-stop a little bit to give it a slightly larger area of focus, that's, uh, the region that's in focus. And we'll play this back one more time. So the last effect that we're going to turn on is screen-based ambient occlusion. And that, again, lives on the Viewport 2.0 node. So we'll go ahead and we'll load that up. Let's get our character back to where he's sort of climbing on that hovercraft, somewhere like that, where his leg's sort of close to it. And we'll just simply enable the screen-based anti-aliasing. When I do that, you can see that it pops on right back there. It's a little dull, so I'll just overdrive the amount so that it's very clear where it's showing up. And we'll just start to increase the radius. And as I do that, you can really see the ambient occlusion starting to fill in the crack underneath the wing here. Obviously, on the back of the spaceport, it's getting a good bit more prevalent. And sort of up into this area, it's also starting to show up even down underneath the wing here. So if we turn that off, you can see it's gone. And as soon as we re-enable it, we get that little extra grounding that happens from that ambient occlusion pass. So the last feature that we want to talk about is actually the ability to use Viewport 2.0 as a rendering engine. If we bring up our render settings, you'll see from my drop-down, I can now select Maya Hardware 2, which for all practical purposes is Viewport 2.0. If we go to our common setting, I'm going to crank down the ambient occlusion because it is a little too strong. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to actually render out a giant 4K image. So we'll just hit the render button. You can see that it takes um, a matter of uh, not very long, actually. I think it took, let's see what it says here, it took three seconds to render out a 4K image, and you can see that it's very high quality and obviously extremely fast. So the thing that's kind of cool about this is because this is just like any of the other rendering engines, engines inside of Maya, it's accessible from the command line. So you can batch render all this stuff using Viewport 2.0, and obviously it'll just batch render super fast. So those are a few of the examples of the things that we can do with Viewport 2.0 in Maya. Thank you.